Scripture reading is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 53. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of, the, of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and will be changed. For this perishable must put on the imperishable, and this This mortar must put on immorality. Loving brothers and sisters, members of brand churches and local sanctuaries, all believers and viewers in the world who are attending this service through Internet. Last time I spoke about the life of the souls who have already entered into the waiting place of heaven on the outskirts of paradise. I also told you that there are some other souls that cannot enter the waiting place of heaven but remain in the upper grave forever. This applies to those who died in the womb of their mothers and received salvation. Today I will be further explaining why they are not able to enter heaven but stay at the upper grave forever and how their spiritual form looked like while they had not been putting on a whole physical body in the womb while on earth. Also, I'll speak about the spiritual forms that are taken on by the souls who stay in the waiting place of heaven about the resurrected body and that we as saved souls uh, will put on when we experience the resurrection and about the perfected heavenly body that we will wear in heaven after the uh, great judgment. Many people endeavor to have a healthy and robust body and women want to have a skin as clean as pure as a precious white gem. stone. Some people worry about their height if they are too short or too tall. Too tall. Some others who are full-figured they may worry about their weight. However, when you discard your physical body, you realize how unnecessary it is to worry about such things. When you put on the resurrected body and then the heavenly body by the power of God, you will feel how great the love of God is when He changes your structure and even the skin color into a more perfected and beautiful one. Therefore, Colossians 3 2 tells us to set your mind on the things above, namely things in heaven, not on the things that are on earth. I ask all of you in the name of the Lord not to set your mind on earthly things that are temporal and perishable, but to seek the heavenly things that are true and everlasting. Brothers and sisters in Christ, when a baby is conceived, the spirit for that baby is not given until the term of the full fifth month of pregnancy. It is given in the sixth month of pregnancy. If the baby is aborted in the womb, Before sixth month, since it has not been given the spirit yet, it has nothing to do with the life to come. Animals have no spirits, so when they die, it just ends. In the same way, when a fetus that has not received the spirit dies, it just comes to an end. It is only God who is entitled to control the life of mankind. So, if any person puts the life of the fetus to death, it is obviously murder. It is an obvious act of standing against the authority of God. How can you say it is a minor sin? Life and death belongs to God. So, if we kill it our own, at our own will, uh, it is a murder. Retribution will surely follow, and you will have a pay a great penalty for it. So we believers in God must never mother the fetuses through the fifth month of pregnancy, despite of the fact that they have not received the Spirit yet, as well as those who have already received the Spirit. Well, I received some repentance letters saying when they were attending another church, they didn't know it was sin and they aborted their babies many times because they were having a financial um, difficulty. Uh, they aborted many times and they were always suffering from many hardships and things were not going well with them. But 
Then they were guided to our church. As they listened to the messages, they came to understand it was a such a uh, great sin, and they realized that they were going through many trials because of that. So they were giving up the peace offering, and they asked me to pray for their forgiveness and intercession. When fetuses that have been given the spirit die, God gives salvation to most of them except very few. That few cases are when the parents and ancestors stood against God seriously and piled up so much evil, so that even from the moment of pregnancy, the fetuses inherited so much evil. You can sometimes see that kind of people, they don't have any relation with God, but they curse God for no reason, saying He is evil God. They don't have any relation with church, but they just curse church and pastors. They're so evil. They don't have anything to do with God, but they just curse. For example, some believers are so wicked and that they speak against the works of the Holy Spirit, judge and condemn and oppose the Holy Spirit and envy and try to kill those who glorify God. When the baby who who inherited all the evil natures of the wicked parents dies in the womb after six months of pregnancy, the baby cannot be saved. Those spirits will not be extinguished and they will fall into the Hades. This is applied so exceptionally to just a few cases. The vast majority of the souls who die in the womb are saved. The fetuses that die in the womb have brains that are virtually blank because they have not been cultivated at all. And when the fetuses die, the spirits that come out of the bodies do not have the proper human shape because the fetuses do not feel the full pregnancy of nine months. They do have eyes, noses, and mouths, but they are not perfect. Their soul shape looks like the spirits of the fetuses that are first given, and the souls are lifted up into the upper grave and stay there until the last resurrection. When the time of the last resurrection comes, the soul's bodies will grow very fast and stop at the the shape of the age of 33. Just as bean sprouts in a jar look very alike, the souls in the upper grave will grow and look alike. Of course, each individual of them will be different according to his or her uh, temperament. The brains of the souls are like a blank paper. The souls grow very quickly up to the age of 33 and fill themselves with knowledge of truth. It is very similar to the body and learning of Adam in the Garden of Eden. God created Adam as a 33-year-old male, but because he had no knowledge whatsoever, God taught him with the knowledge of life one by one. God taught him, but he didn't come to the paradise to teach him. I explained about this in the lectures on Genesis. When Adam was made, his body was the body of a grown-up, but his soul was like a newborn baby without any knowledge. Brothers and sisters, is egg first or chicken first? Egg? Well, Crocodiles also are born from the eggs. And for crocodiles, is egg first or crocodile first? It's the crocodile. It's the same with every bird and other, uh, and other animals. Tiger was first and not the cup. The Bible clearly tells us God made Adam and Eve, and then He gave them sperm and egg to reproduce. Then it's the same with all other animals, birds, and insects, and everything. So God Himself taught him various knowledge of the Spirit for a long period. 
Unlike Adam, who had no evil at all when he was created and lived in the Garden of Eden, the souls that have been saved from the womb and remain in the upper grave once had a fleshly body that also included sinful attributes. That's why, according to the spiritual order and ranking, the souls are inferior to Adam, who lived in the Garden of Eden. And the souls cannot enter heaven but have to stay at the uh, upper grave because they are saved without experiencing God's human cultivation. Brothers and sisters, what are like the shapes of the souls who have experienced human cultivation on earth and received salvation and then stay at the waiting place for heaven? Spiritual shape refers to the unique shape of the spirit. Every creature on earth including human beings, animals, and plants, has its own shape. It's in the same way, each spirit has its own body that makes them look different from each other. When a person dies, his spirit, whose shape looks like his body, comes out of the body. Those whose spiritual eyes are open can see it. When one dies, the spirit of a child looks like the child. The spirit of a young man looks like young. Looks young. The spirit of an adult looks grown up. And the spirit of an old man looks old. So we can see when each individual has died through the shape of the spiritual bodies. But the spiritual shapes have no disabled part, scar, wrinkle, or beard like our physical bodies have. Some people die of wellnessness, but their spiritual shapes are healthy and beautiful. When old people die, their spiritual shapes look like their physical bodies, but are not old or weak at all. So, even if one of your arms is amputated after a traffic accident or something, your spiritual body will have perfect two arms. Even if you... uh, Um, your, one of your eyes was hurt by a mistake, your spiritual body will have perfect two eyes. No matter when he lived and no matter what kind of race he, ha- he was, the ra- spiritual uh, uh, shape of every soul who has been saved will have white skin and wear white clothes. The spiritual shape of each soul will shine with lights differently according to how much they have accomplished the word of God and sanctification on earth. I'll tell you again. If a person in the Old Testament days have come into the whole spirit, where does he enter? Those people who have come into the whole spirit in the Old Testament days were carried to the bosom of Abraham in the upper grave. Abraham was there. When did he go into New Jerusalem? It's when the Lord has risen and ascended. He didn't go through the outskirts of paradise, but our Lord took him from the upper grave when he was ascending and took him to New Jerusalem directly. Also, he did not enter his house that he would dwell forever, but entered the place the Father prepared and lives there. I told you that. After the great judgment, they will go into their own house respectively. How about in the New Testament days? Those who have come into the whole spirit in the New Testament days also go to the upper grave. They stay there for three days because they need adaption, adaptation and learning about spiritual realm. Then they directly go into New Jerusalem, not to the outskirts of paradise. Only people of the whole spirit do so. People of spirit go to the outskirts of paradise, but people of the whole spirit go to New Jerusalem. So, although Samuel, the prophet, who was a man of the whole spirit, because it was uh, in the Old Testament days before the Lord's resurrection, he came up out of the earth. But those who have taken a life did not go to the upper grave, but went to uh, uh, New Jerusalem directly. It's the case of Enoch, Moses, or Eliza. You may say Moses died, but it's written in the Bible that 
they couldn't find the body of Moses when he was gone. And in the book of Judas, it says that the archangel disputed with the, with the devil and argued about the body of Moses. And it says in the New Testament that Moses came down with Eliza to meet the Lord at the Mount of Transfiguration. If we relate these verses, we can see that he was carried away. So now you understand all these, right? And the length of women's hair will be different according to the measure of their spirit they have cultivated on earth. The hair will fall down to the waist for the women who have accomplished the whole spirit and reached the highest level of faith. And the hair will reach the middle of the back for the women who reached the fourth level of faith by throwing away every kind of evil and becoming sanctified. but have not accomplished the whole spirit. It's about a span of a hand above about the waist, but people have different heights. Anyway, so the hair comes down to about the middle of the spine for women in third kingdom of heaven. And for those who go to New Jerusalem, their hair comes down to the end of the spine. For most of women who have re- received the salvation, the hair falls down to their shoulders. And other women in paradise, the first kingdom and the second kingdom of heaven, their hair comes down to touch the shoulder line. It's about the length of the ladies who don't have very long hair now. So just to see the length of their hair, we can guess what kind of heavenly dwelling place the souls can enter. Namely, we can see whether that person is from New Jerusalem, the third kingdom, or the second kingdom of heaven. All men's hair falls down as far as the neck. But now, we don't see any man here whose hair comes down to the neck. But in case of some artists or poets, uh, we we may see some of them grow their hair down to their neck or longer. For most of us, our hair does go down as far as the neckline. But in heavenly kingdom, it will be longer to come down to the neckline. I believe that you have surveyed and understood the spiritual shapes of the souls who stay at the waiting place of heaven. Brothers and sisters, the people who stay in the waiting place of heaven have not put put on the, the imperishable body but exist as the combination of soul and spirit. So the souls who stay at the waiting place of heaven are waiting for the final resurrection. When our Lord Jesus Christ appears in the air, they will be able to wear the resurrected body that is imperishable and everlasting. You may think it's complicated. God could have given us a resurrected body from the beginning. And why are the spiritual shape, the resurrected body, and the perfect heavenly body? But I'll explain about it soon. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 3 53 say, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We'll not all sleep, but we'll all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. Our Lord will come in the air, along with the archangels and the sound of trumpets, and in glory to take us. And we will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable. This is about those believers who died early and are buried in tombs. And we will be changed. Why do those in the tombs go up first? I will tell you about that soon too. For this perishable must put on the imperishable. And this mortal must put on immorality. As said in these verses, when our Lord comes again in the air, the souls who are asleep in Christ and stay in the waiting place of heaven will first come down from there and unite with the imperishable and everlasting bodies that are resurrected from the grave. It's like docking of spaceships. If we said the word docking just about 100 years ago, people wouldn't have understood, but now we do. And those who are alive will put on the imperishable and everlasting body in a moment and be lifted up into the air. This is called the rapture. 
Why are there these processes? It's because of the so-called docking. The bodies in the grave will first put on the uh, put on the resurrected body and be caught up into the air. In the air, those bodies will meet their owners, which are the spirits who will have been waiting in the outskirts of paradise. These spirits will come down to the air following the Lord's coming in the air. You see in the Bible talking about the second coming of the Lord. They will come along with all the others and in the air, namely in the second heaven, about which I will explain as to where we will have seven-year wedding banquet and how we will do it. But anyway, the bodies and spirit combine together in the air. The resurrected body and the spirit will be combined together. This is just like talking. They'll be combined and we'll have spirit, soul, and body. Now you understand, don't you? There is a procedure. So those who are in the grave will first resurrect and go up, and those who are living on this earth and have accepted the Lord will follow them. Their bodies will change into imperishable bodies and will be caught up into the air. This is called the rapture. The imperishable and everlasting body that the saved souls will receive at the second coming of the Lord is called the resurrected body. With this resurrected body, we will attain the 7 e a r wedding banquet and come down to the earth and spend the millennium there. In what aspects is the resurrected body different from the spiritual shape that we will wear at the wedding place of, uh, wedding place of heaven? This will be explained later. But anyway, when you come down to this earth, this earth will be completely different. During the seven-year tribulation, there will be the Third World War, and there will be many corpses decaying and so many dirty things. The Lord will clean all these things and make this earth very clean, and then we will come down to this earth. Even the air will be cleaned, and it will have no pollution. We'll live on earth for 1,000 years. We'll elaborate on this um, in the Revelation lecture series. In one aspect, is the resurrected body different from spiritual shapes? That will be in the waiting place of heaven. First, the resurrected body has the shape of 33-year-old in age at that during which Jesus lived on earth. And this is applied to everybody, whether old or young, men or women. The sun is the brightest at the time of noonday. In the same way, the peak of human life is at the age of the 33. three-year-old. A person who is under the age of 30 is inexperienced in many ways, and a person who is above 40 looks aged and is enervated. But a person who is around the age of 33 is matured and beautiful. So it is also mature. Comparing it with flower, it's when it fully blooms, then there is time for the flower to fall. We men, too, begin to fall from about 33 years. Then we'll get old and our strength will not be as strong as before. There'll be wrinkles on faces and the skin will get old, too. The flower is falling. It is um, the period for the fully bloom flower to fall. That's why God chooses and lets His saved children wear the imperishable and everlasting body of the shape of 33-year-old. Men's height is 190 centimeters. Women's height will be about a span of a hand shorter, so uh, it will be about 170 centimeters. 170 centimeters. The structure is neither skinny nor fat. Everyone is in the best shape. You have the slim bodies that people usually want. Some people ask me to pray for them because their belly is too big. But if you go to heaven, you don't have to worry about these things at all. This embodies the love of God who lets us live in the everlasting kingdom of heaven in a form that is beautiful and young. This resurrected body has imperishable and eternal flesh and bones, so this resurrected body is tangible. The resurrected body also breathes, eats, and drinks. 
when you go to heaven, you will eat the fruit of life and 12 different kinds of fruits. There will be parties every time to eat and drink. Our Lord also said He will drink the wine only after all the people come into the kingdom of heaven. The food eaten comes out of the body through breathing and is divided into nothing. So the processes of digestion and excretion are not needed anymore. So in the heavenly kingdom, you don't have to go to the bathroom. And if you just put the the fruit in the mouth, it will dissolve and come out through the breathing. So you can see how soft they are. It's so soft and tasty that it will just melt in the mouth. Because it's so delicious and it melts in the mouth, it will dissolve and come out through the breath. How delicious the fruit is. But even the same fruit of life and the water of river of life will taste differently in the paradise, the first kingdom, second kingdom, third kingdom, and New Jerusalem. This resurrected body is spiritual and imperishable, so it transcends the limitations of the physical world and can go anywhere as it wants. The feeling and sensations that the resurrected body has in the spiritual space is totally different from that of spiritual shape. The feeling in the spiritual shape is not easy to explain. We can compare it with the difference between dream and reality. You feel something you experience in your dream is real, but that feeling is completely different when you touch things and you move somewhere in reality. If we compare the feeling that the spiritual shape consisting of spirit and soul alone has in the spiritual space with that in dreams, even if it is not complete, the resurrected body can feel the spiritual space as a reality. So, the spiritual shape is not complete, but only when we wear the resurrected body can we lay the foundation by which we can live in spiritual space. It was our Lord Jesus who showed the reality of the resurrected body. He resurrected on the third day of His burial and showed Himself to His disciples. John 20, 19 tells us that when the doors were shut where the disciples were for the fear for the Jews, uh, Jesus came and stood in their midst. They were in fear and they locked themselves in. If they were found, they would have been arrested. But the Lord just appeared. He didn't knock on the door to tell them to open it. He just appeared. And Luke 24, 42, 43 say, They gave him a piece of a broiled fish, and he took it and ate it before them. Then we see the Bible says, Jesus breathed it out. Why does the Bible have to say even such a thing? When he ate, the food was dissolved, and it went out through the breath. And Jesus said to his disciples in Luke 24, 39, See my hands and my feet, namely, look at the hands and feet with the nail scars, that it is I myself, touch me and see you, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. Thus the Lord revealed His resurrected form of Himself to His disciples, and thereby planted the assurance of the faith in resurrection into their hearts, and let them know about the resurrected body through His resurrected body. But our Lord didn't really have the scars after He, after he resurrected. In a, a hymnal song, it says we'll see His hands and feet with the scars, but it's actually, actually wrong. Then why did the Lord show the scars to the disciples? Otherwise, they wouldn't have recognized them, Him. So it was to let them recognize Him. Thomas had doubt, and even if he had said He was Jesus, they couldn't believe it. Why? Because His body was very different now. He didn't have the beard, and he was shining, and he was much taller. Everything is changed, so they couldn't recognize him. Even when he was with the two disciples who were going to Emmaus, they didn't recognize him. Only when Jesus revealed himself clearly, they recognized him. 
In the same way, it was for the disciples to believe Him without any doubt and that He showed them His hands and feet with the scars. Why? In the fourth heaven, you can change the form as you like. You can change them from solid substance to liquid, from liquid to gas. But I didn't say the resurrected Lord changes Himself as He wants in the kingdom of heaven. I didn't say that. I said it was the fourth heaven. Please listen carefully. It is about the fourth heaven. So God can do as He wants. Not not in the third heaven. At first, Mary Magdalene and the disciples did not recognize the Lord who wore the resurrected body. That was because the spiritual lights that came out of His resurrected body, our Lord showed the prints of the nails in in His hands to the doubting Thomas. It did not mean that those prints of the nails remained on His resurrected body. He revealed His physical body to Thomas temporarily in order to plant a faith in His heart. But at the At that time, his whole body was not the very body that Jesus had put on during his ministry. For example, the body with beard. He just showed the prints of nails on his hands as a sign confirming himself as their teacher. Those whose spiritual eyes are open see the spiritual shapes and the physical body of prophets. By the present scripture shapes of the prophets, they are wearing white clothes and shine differently according to the measure of their lights. With His power, God can overlap their spiritual shapes with their physical body that they had on earth. Dear brothers and sisters, we will enjoy the seven-year wedding banquet with our resurrected bodies and then come down to the earth again to live for a thousand years. After that, each of us will enter our own dwelling place decided for us according to the great white throne judgment. For this, we'll wear the heavenly body that is the complete spiritual body. There is resurrected body, and there is also heavenly body. Heavenly body is above and different from the resurrected body. The spiritual shape, resurrected body, and the heavenly body are all different. Let me tell you the biggest difference between the two bodies. The saved souls will receive different glory, authority, and reward at the great white throne judgment, as they have done so and so on earth. So the heavenly bodies that they will wear after the great judgment will reveal not only their level of sanctification, but glory and rewards and glory God of God will uh, um, and the glory God will give them. We'll have the reward judgment. And so, according to the rewards, the brightness and things will be different. So, uh, we can know many things just to see the heavenly body of each individual apart from his clothes and decorations. For example, we can understand how much he has loved God and lived by his word, how faithful and devoted he had been to the kingdom of God. And we can realize which kingdom of heaven his willing residence belongs to and what kind of glory and rewards he has received from God. For your better understanding of this, let's think of a different official dress that graduates wear according to their different degrees and the dress of judges that they wear on the court. They're really judges and um, uh, doctors, even if they do not wear official dress, but if they, they appear in official attire, anybody can understand that they're doctors or judges. You have different clothes for doctorates and the judge. In old days, the costume uh, for the kings and queens were different, and it was different between the queen and the concubines. Also, the prime minister and other ministers have different clothes and different belts. In the same way, The measure of sanctification and rewards for each man is already decided after the history of human cultivation. So each person is recognized and discerned according to the spiritual light his spiritual shape shines. In Europe, maybe in England, just by looking at the clues, they they could understand somebody is duke or court. Through the great wise throne's judgment, however, God will officially recognize and declare the unique glory and authority and reward to each person. So the heavenly body of each person will reveal everything of its glory, authority, and reward. 
When a person meets another who is higher in glory, authority, and reward, the former will show truthful honor to and, ha- and bow before the latter. So, even in the same place, I say, um, in the second kingdom of heaven, they have different lights. Of course, even the brightest light will be less than those in the third kingdom of heaven, but they all have different lights and rewards in the same second kingdom of heaven, too. Thus, there will be the order naturally. So, if one is higher than you in the rank, you will express your respect coming from the depths of your heart. Brothers and sisters, why then does God let, not let us wear the heavenly body at the second coming of our Lord, but instead allows us to put on the resurrected body? It will be much easier to make the perfect heavenly body from the beginning, but then why does God distinguish between the spiritual shape, resurrected body, and heavenly body? The kingdom of air, where we celebrate the 7 0 wedding banquet, is very different from the kingdom of heaven, where we will live forever and ever in the passing of time and density of space. And according to Accordingly, God will let us wear different and proper bodies in each different space. Let's say your spirit leaves your body, so now you have a spiritual shape. This spiritual shape is in this space. It can adapt to this space, and also it can adapt itself in heaven, in paradise. But this resurrected body will not go to paradise, but it will receive the Lord in the air to have the seven-year wedding banquet. So it has to adapt to the second heaven. God made it to fit the second heaven at the best. Then Then later, it has to come down to this earth, the first heaven. So God had made it fit this too, so that it can adapt itself to different environments. You see, the density in the second heaven is greater than this first heaven where we are living right now. The density is all different between the third and the third heaven too. That's why God gives us the most appropriate body i n to fit uh, different spaces. Let's compare the people who live in the highest mountain regions with those living in lowlands. They differ in the breathing capacity. There is less oxygen in the highlands than in other places. So the body of the residents needs to increase the breathing capacity to compensate for as much oxygen as needed. It is not easy for the people coming from other places to adapt themselves to these conditions, but they can do it as t i m e passes. Some marathoners go to and practice in the highlands to increase the breathing capacity. If we have some soccer match in Latin America and they first go to high mountains for their training to get used to that environment, otherwise they'll have trouble breathing when they play. Just as people apply their bodies according to the situation in which they live, the souls have to wear the proper and different spiritual bodies according to the spiritual spaces they, where they live. So God lets us wear the proper spiritual bodies in accordance with the timing. Why does God give us the heavenly body after the great judgment? After we receive the great judgment, Uh, the judgment of reward, we will directly go to the heavenly kingdom. We'll go to the third kingdom of heaven, so God gives us the heavenly body, which is the best for that environment. How are spiritual shape and heavenly body different? Spiritual shape does not live on this earth. It will wait in the upper grave and then go to the outskirts of paradise. It will not have the body with it. Because we have, co- have to come down to this earth after the seven y e a r tribulation, the body with spirit, bo- soul, and body, and live here. And God gave us such a body. For what kind of spiritual spaces does God allow us to wear different spiritual bodies? This will be explained to you along with the whole stru- structure of the spiritual realm next time. Let me conclude the message, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today I have explained about the spiritual shapes of the saved souls, the resurrected body that we will wear on the last resurrection, and heavenly bodies that we will put on after the great white throne judgment. No matter what kind of spiritual body he has, each person shines different spiritual lights from the inside him to the extent that he has made the 
um, bread of the word of God who is light and walked in it. So I urge you to check what kind of spiritual lights you are shining from the inside. Are you shining the lights, the brightness of a small star in the dark sky, sky, the moon, or the noonday sun? What is important is that you will shine different lights according to the measure of spirit you have accomplished on earth and live with the heavenly body with that measure of light. May each of you cultivate your heart into spirit, shine your light into the world, and glorify God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Hallelujah! Almighty Father God of love, Please lay your hands on all brothers and sisters receiving this prayer here in attendance. Lay your hands on all the members of the brain churches and local centuries, and all the GCN TV viewers, and those who are watching via satellites, cables, and internet all over the world. Plant faith in their hearts and drive out their negative thoughts and doubts. Let all the trials and afflictions leave them. By the fire of the Holy Spirit, from head to toe, scorch their sick and affected parts, including all cells, tissues, and nerves, all internal organs and intestines. Let the light of creation come upon them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs, and viruses, and infirmities go away. Let the light shine on them. Scorch their incurable and long-term diseases by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Burn all kinds of endemic and contagious diseases like malaria. All epidemic diseases such as colds and fever go away from them. Protect them, Father, from any kind of germs and viruses and bacteria. Heal them of all kinds of cancers, stomach cancer, lung cancer, liver cancer, breast cancer, womb cancer, intestinal cancer. And all other diseases like AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, women's disease, thyroid diseases, and all inflammations. Let them be made whole from the polio, stroke, arthritis, herniated discs, and many others. Let all kinds of pains disappear from them, like back pain, headache, and neuralgia. Set them free from epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and all other mental diseases. Loosen them from all kinds of paralysis and let them get up, walk, and jump. Let them regain good eyesight and restore good hearing. Let the blind open their eyes. Let the deaf come to hear and let the mute begin to speak. Heal accidents after effects. Restore their ruptured and broken bones. Restore them from burns and let the heat and burning sensation go away from them. Father, let there be no scars left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions and poisoning. Father, regenerate dead nerves, tissues, and cells and bring the dead back to life. Bless them to conceive a baby. Father, please give them blessing to conceive a baby. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the air, the evil forces and their servants, go away from them. Go away, evil spirits, unclean spirits, deceiving spirits, spirits of falsehood, separating spirits and all forces of darkness. Loosen all bones of wickedness and darkness and go away from them. Let the light shine on them. Father God, give them strength to cry out in prayer and empower them with the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. Let them be in good health as their soul becomes prosperous and let their family be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters and bless them to lead a successful and prosperous life in everything. Please protect your children, their homes and business and their work with the fiery hedge of the Holy Spirit, with heavenly hosts and angels and with your blazing eyes. Give students wisdom and understanding and fill their hearts with more passion and desire for study. Keep their hearts and minds from worldly things and plant into their hearts more fervent love for God. Bless your children and let them give glory to you in everything they do, whether they eat or drink or whatever they may do. 
Let them confess and testify to the living God. I have met and experienced God and received His answers and blessings. Father God, thank You. Let all glory be to You alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.